So how come our Lord Jesus asked his apostles twice the question about who he is, who he really is? The first question was, of course, who do people say that I am? And then there's the ever important, but who do you say that I am? It's actually quite simple if you think about it. Our Lord could have just come right out and asked the 12, okay guys, I've been with you for about three years now. Who am I? Who do you say that I am? But what Jesus had to clear up first was the difference between opinion and belief. That's why he asked the first question about what others were saying about him. Now the apostles knew what others were thinking about our Lord Jesus. How could they not? Everywhere they went, there were large crowds. If you have any large group of people, you're gonna have a large variety of opinions. So it was the opinion of the people that Jesus might be John the Baptist come back from the dead, or Elijah come back down to earth, or maybe one of the other prophets. But see, those were just opinions. None of those comments had any faith behind it. And so our very clever Lord Jesus, he makes a very powerful point by showing all of us, beginning with the apostles, that opinions don't matter. What does matter is faith. So he poses the question again, but this time in a way that demands faith. But who do you say that I am? Now, could the apostles have just given their own opinion about who they thought Jesus was? Well, sure. But even though I was not there, I'm quite sure that our blessed Lord gave his boys one of those looks when he asked that question. You know how Jesus is, that unmistakable ability to look right into our hearts and souls when he speaks to us. So there's no way they could have just offered up an opinion. They would have to speak in faith. Now here in our gospel from St. Mark, it looks like Peter answered rather quickly, and he probably did. Peter was not only the impetuous one of the 12, he would also be chosen by our Lord to be the leader of the apostles, even though Peter would not fully know that until this very day. And so under the influence of the Holy Spirit, Peter cries out, you are the Christ. As you all know, the word Christ means the anointed one. In other words, the Messiah. Now that is a statement of faith. We have to do the same. Every time you come to Mass, every time you pick up your rosary, every time you come to confession, the same question is asked of you. Who do you say that I am? And what's required is the same. God does not want an opinion of who you think his son is. He wants a statement of faith. And so we provide such things. He's my savior. He's my Lord. He's the one who sets me free from sin. He's the one who loves me when everybody else lets me down. He's the one, the only one, who's truly faithful to me. But don't just say those words, live those words. Because even if we say words of faith about our Lord Jesus, there's always a tendency to fall into a trap that Peter fell into. So even though Peter, he gets it absolutely right in Jesus, he of course is the Christ, and Jesus praises Peter, okay, but once our Lord starts to tell them all about how, as the Messiah, he's going to have to suffer, eventually be killed, rise again, even though the 12 did not know at all what he was talking about. But Peter suddenly stops treating Jesus as the Messiah, the Almighty One, and instead is telling Jesus what to do. In fact, he rebukes the Lord. Now true, it could have been that Peter's idea of what the Messiah should be like didn't match what Jesus was saying, especially the part of having to die. But more than likely, especially if any of you study the life of Peter through the scriptures, it could have simply been that Peter was only trying to protect our Lord Jesus. But Peter quickly forgot something, didn't he? The Christian faith, the Catholic faith most especially, is a response to revelation. It's a response to all that our Lord Jesus reveals to us. He just reveals to the apostles what he had to go through in order to save all of us. We are to believe because God himself, through our Lord Jesus, has shared his mind with us. For Peter, for all of us called to be disciples of our Lord, called to follow him, 
We do so by accepting all that God reveals to us. Because if we don't stop thinking as human beings do, we're going to find ourselves objecting to what God is trying to show us. We get in the way that way. And believe me, God wants to reveal so much more to you than you can ever imagine. So we think how God thinks by accepting what he reveals to us. It's just that simple. But now, not only do we respond to what Jesus reveals to us, we also have to follow him, as he tells us today. And that, of course, means what? In the second half of today's gospel, we have to take up our cross. It's also definitely part of our Lord's plan, that this whole scene to tell his disciples about their own cross, but also the new life they can receive through that cross, it comes after he announces what he's going to have to go through, suffering, death, and resurrection. In other words, our Lord Jesus never gives anything to us that he himself did not already go through. He's showing us the way. So the Christian finds new life in and through the cross that is given to us. And here's what you all got to get down, okay? And don't ever lose your focus on this, all right? The cross that you have to carry, it's not meant to just be some sort of inconvenience, a symbol of how sometimes we just have to tough it out. And sometimes how we just have to hang in there even though things can get kind of difficult. It's that, it's a lot more than that. The cross is meant to kill. Did you get that? The cross, your cross, the one you're supposed to be carrying every day is meant to kill. So for those of us who are sinners, we faithfully carry our cross. It will put to death everything that's stopping us from not only getting to God, but living a life in communion with God, especially our risen Lord and especially in Holy Communion. Now, sure, at times, we're very much aware of how painful our cross can be because there are parts of our lives, our nasty habits, our hatefulness, our unforgiveness, our selfishness, our anger, our rebellious nature that have to be crucified. And some of that is not going to want to die easily, guys. So let's be honest, the cross hurts. That's why so many people don't even want to think about picking it up. But what makes the pain bearable? We receive new life in and through our Lord Jesus, and especially through the cross. There's much, much more than that. There's also the fact that he, our Lord, helps us carry our crosses. See, our Lord Jesus, he showed us how magnificently he carried the cross. Incredible example. He carried the cross bravely courageously, and of course, victoriously. But our Lord, he's far, far too loving to just give us an example, even if it's the greatest example of how to carry our cross. He actually helps us to carry ours. In fact, don't be blinded by your emotions, okay? Some of you might feel from time to time all alone. You might feel totally abandoned, maybe even forsaken, but you never carry your cross alone, never. If you simply stop, open your eyes of faith, there's Jesus right there, carrying you as you're carrying your cross. And the great thing is, Jesus will not let anything within us die, even the things that are supposed to die within us, that, without also giving to us the fullness of that new life, a life far better to be lived with him. So here's one more question for you all then today. Do you believe that? Do you believe that life with Christ Jesus is much more blessed than what the world has to offer? Well, if you do, you'll be able to do what Peter and the other apostles did. In fact, what every saint has been able to do. Lose your life for the sake of Jesus so that your true life may be found. So what sort of Lord are we following? What sort of inspiration do you all need to confidently pick up your cross and follow our Lord? Well, St. Augustine, this is one of his more obscure quotes, but very powerfully, St. Augustine once said, Jesus died, but he vanquished death 
In himself, he put an end to what we all feared. He took it upon himself and vanquished it. As a mighty hunter, he captured and slew the lion. The Lord has conquered. It's time for us to receive the spoils of his victory and to rejoice in the words of St. Paul as we fully take them into our hearts and into our lives. But far be it from me to glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world.